Well, today we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, subwoofers. Boom, boom, woof, woof. Yeah, we like subwoofers. And for those of you that are new to the program and don't know, um, I have sort of developed a, a reputation for being a nut about low frequencies because I believe that low frequencies are, in most systems, the missing element. And I'm not talking about speaker systems that have decent bass and you can hear a guy plucking away at the bass and playing away what you miss is the lowest frequencies the things that our ear brain perceptive mechanisms recognize like the rumble of traffic like uh, the footfalls of, of of a conductor walking on the stage the 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 little subtle cues the air conditioning system the the low frequency element that is on recordings that almost 99% of every loudspeaker system sucks at and does not produce can be fixed with the addition of a subwoofer. But the trick with a subwoofer, you don't want to hear it. You want to make sure that that subwoofer augments the main speaker's bass response. And on the best setup systems, you have all that low frequency information and it sounds just like it's coming from the main speakers. So there's, there's my pitch. All right. So our, our, um, our question today comes from Alan. Uh, no, I'm sorry, from uh, Ghislaine in Three Rivers, Quebec, Canada. Thanks for sharing your thoughts on audio on this regular basis. Um, I own large bookshelf speakers that are Focal Utopia Diablos. Nice speakers. I like the Focal brand. Um, I love the resolution and soundstage. And in order to help with the low end, I added a subwoofer. Good job. And then a second one. Both are RELs, my favorite. My room is not ideal. Uh, and I'm getting peaks and nulls in the 30 to 110 hertz area. I'm considering bass traps, but in the meantime, I started to play with the setup of the two speakers. And I understand that you have a trick about how to set up a speaker that's actually, uh, a subwoofer that's actually pretty easy. And in fact, I do. So there's, if you watch my friend John Hunter, who's the owner of Rel Subs, what he goes through to set up a sub and a main pair of speakers is extraordinary. It, 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 and the results are extraordinary. I mean, it, it's, it's, um, it, it, it is a joy to watch John do this. It's an art. And when he gets done, it's phenomenal. He set up our room at the Rocky Mountain Audio Fest uh, last year. And wow, <laughs> we've never had a room sound that good. So setup is a really critical thing to do. And no one I know knows it better than John. So. I, I can't share with you John's because I am not a master setup uh, to, to, as John is. I'm learning and John's helping me, but I, I, I am pretty good at it. So I can share what I know and some easy tricks to set up a subwoofer. And you may have heard this before or you may not because it's a little counterintuitive. But the best way to set up a subwoofer, the easiest way to set up a subwoofer since they are so room dependent and every room is different and every subwoofer setup is different is by swapping positions of the subwoofer with the listener. Now this might sound funny but if you imagine the difficulty of sitting in your listening chair cranking up the stereo and you get a woo, woo, a big boom or howl or a suck out at a certain frequency, we know that you can fix that by moving the subwoofer. You can move it and then go sit back down and hopefully you got it. Maybe you're a mile off. You don't know. It could go anywhere from being in the corner to the middle to, you know, wherever. So one thing you can do is swap positions. And by that, I mean, take the subwoofer and put it on the seat. Put it where you're seated and hook it up, play the subwoofer, and now you move to the back of your stereo pair of speakers and start listening to the place back there where everything sounds without all those dips and bumps in the amplitude. And when you find that place, mark the spot with some tape. Then reverse the position, 
put the subwoofer back where you were standing, where it was perfect, and then when you sit down and play it, you'll get exactly the same response. It'll be even, it'll be without dips and bumps, it'll be identical to what you heard over there. And so you just swapped and you went like that. It is a really wonderful trick and it helps a lot. The other piece of advice I'll give you on subwoofers, as I, as I like to do, keep the frequency as low as you can, the upper frequency. Um, I would never go above 100 hertz if you can help it, and lower is better. So don't forget, when you connect a subwoofer, the end game, the goal we're trying to achieve is that I don't know there's a subwoofer in the room never should draw attention to itself. You want to make sure that your bookshelves sound like they have killer bass. And that's the function of a subwoofer. I hope that helps. Thanks. Bye-bye.